protectors Trapping the truth that make your film collectors Cody and Mitch ain't even real directors But they still gonna tell you which movie was better With We're the Real Inspectors with Shreveport Talks. Uh, last week we did a little video called Lit for It, and uh, we got some people who had never seen It before to watch the original 90s miniseries, and we got their thoughts on it. This is uh, how it went. Hey, my name is Brian. Uh, I just saw It for the first time, and I thought it was alright. And um, yeah, I guess I'm excited to see the new one here with Brooke. <laughs> so we just watched it. Um, well I just wanted to say that this movie was fantastic. <laughs> I don't know man, I just don't wanna I, I just don't wanna see that spider in like well, CGI in now. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not the spider. Maybe we could just focus more on the clown and not the spider. The clown's cooler, I can deal with that the, the spider just not a fan of spiders, though. What I love about these types of horror films is everything is, um, everything is, create like, handmade. Like, they actually took the, the time to create all of the things that you are seeing. So you're, so you're hoping that they kind of shy away from the computer effects and use more practical effects? I'm hoping that that's, that's what they do, yes. All right. <laughs> I'm worried they're not. <laughs> so do you think that the new one could come close to topping this for you? Or be better? Well, if they do it right, then I'm going to be... You're going to have an open mind. Proud, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, we'll get back to you when we actually see the movie and see what you think then. How does that sound? <laughs> we'll see. Yo, what's up? My name is Mitch. I just watched It for the first time. It was pretty good. Um, it was enjoyable. I'm glad I finally watched it after all these years because it's got a lot of hype behind it. If you haven't seen it, you're kind of a pariah. So I'm glad I finally got around to watching it. I wouldn't want to say the ending was like anticlimactic to me, but just not what I expected. Um, I definitely hope the new one is like really good and gory. and I'm really excited to see how it's translated into a newer film. So, yeah, cool. I'm here with uh, B. Wayne. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you don't prefer that name, right? Okay. No, don't call me that, please. Uh, what, what did you think of the movie? Uh, well, it could have used a little bit more darkness in it. Darkness? To be honest. And could have used a little bit more about, you know, Martha. But, you know, other than that, it wasn't too terrible. And I'm kind of looking forward to the new one. Sweet. Well, uh, we'll have to catch up with you on that later, Batman. All right. Uh, thanks. Bye. Some of the people who were at the Lit for It returned for the new film and shared their thoughts with us after the new movie. Well, I think this one is different for sure. Um, different? <laughs> yeah. I think it'll definitely not be as cheesy, per se, I guess, but I just love the... Um, I love the Practical. clown it, well, like his the form of the clown, anyway, because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> so do you think that old Pennywise or newer Pennywise is scarier? Um, honestly, I, pref I think I prefer the old one. Old Pennywise. To be honest, I mean, they're both pretty great, but there's just something about Tim Curry or just however he portrayed <laughs> the clown. Uh got you um so there's gonna be a part two are you definitely all in for chapter two or i hope it's like next year <laughs> so you can't wait Not huh? two years from now hey i'm here with b wayne we just saw it uh what do you think of the new one i saw it too to stop calling me that oh sorry man sorry man uh, uh bat man thank you so mr man what were your thoughts on the film well after seeing the original it's a little bit nice to see a little remastering, but damn it, we could have used a little bit more Martha in it, and a little bit more darkness. Wait, 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 Martha's not in this movie, what are you talking about? Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying, she was supposed to be in the movie. Well, I guess we could get a little, we, we got a lot of backstory in this movie though, a lot of origin story, which is something that, that you like to do a lot too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you appreciated that. Yeah, a lot. For the second one? Uh, 
Yeah, as long as I get to make a cameo in it. All right, well. What was that noise? That, that about wraps her up. Uh, I don't know where he went, but uh, guess we'll catch B. Wayne next time. What's up, y'all? This is Walt Williams. We just got done watching Stephen King's It 2017. Got to say, it was a great movie. It, uh, it was true to the book. It, uh, it changed some of the scares, but it kept, like, all the themes the same, you know, like, rite of passage, coming of age tell. You got, like, a small town in Maine that looks really pleasant and friendly on the surface, but there's a lot of dark shit going on underneath. Uh, and you had, like, just your typical, like, Stephen King good versus evil, which is in most of his stories and was, of course, present in this one, overcoming your fears, stuff like that. Um, they definitely... They definitely uh, hit all the high points, I think. They changed up some of the scares, like I said. Not every monster was the same way in the same place, but you know, it kept you on the edge of your seat, and it's like you kind of knew what to expect, but then they twisted it, and it was really cool. Uh, you're a fan of the books, right? Yes. Uh, so how did this one stack up uh, to the books? Like, Was it accurate to the books more so than the original or the miniseries from the 90s? Or? I think so. I think they, uh, they were able to include a lot more. And I think uh, I think one of the one of the big things was just like the scare level it was a lot scarier than the miniseries. Where like you know I saw the miniseries for the first time when I was like seven or eight, and it really did scare me. But then like when I was like twelve, I read the book, and that really like some of those parts I couldn't get out of my head for a while. They were really creepy. And then I watched the miniseries again after reading the book, and it was just like eh, it was you know it, it wasn't the same. So you definitely recommend this? You're all in for the chapter two? Oh, absolutely. I think they did a great job. I expected it to be good, and it was better than I expected. I, I don't usually get out to the theater, too, so this is definitely, like, you know, one that I would say is worth getting out to. Hey, everybody. This is me. I'm Mia, and this is Brian. We just got through watching It. Stephen King. It was a pretty good movie. Uh, really scary for me. I watched it when I was younger, and it was the first scary movie I ever watched, and it terrified me then, and it terrified me again today. My back is still sweaty from <laughs> leaning against the seat the entire time. <laughs> yeah, my hand's still cramping up from her squeezing it most of the time. <laughs> but um, from the movie standpoint, I um, really enjoyed it just because from the original, I mean, yeah, it was in it the 90s. pretty close to the story. Yeah, it was in 90s, you know, with Tim Curry back then. I, he mortified me more, way worse than this Pennywise did, but, you know, I know it's a new, newer age, newer, you know, 2017. They try to keep the audience and everybody appealed with it. Really loved the random humor. Did a great job, though. Yeah, he, it was a really good movie. I loved the random humor from that kid, man. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, he was the best. <laughs> he was. <laughs> all right, uh, so have you read the books at all? Or? I know, no. I wish I have. So, uh, you definitely think it's a step up from the 90s. But again, Absolutely. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Are you all in for chapter two? Would you go to see oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, his hand is ready. I'm there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, just saw it, and it's super cool. Uh, really a lot a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I love the original version. I love Tim Curry. Um, and I kind of came in with this one with like kind of a grain of salt. But uh, actually very pleasantly surprised. A lot of the corniness that they had in the first one, which I mean when you're like eight or nine years old watching that, it's going to be scary, but you watch it as an adult and it's not that bad. I feel like this one's a great update. It actually kind of capitalizes, like me, like I was expecting a lot of this stuff and it's just, it got me. <laughs> a few times, it got me. It got me. I've, I know they exist. Um, I've been meaning to read them, but I have not. And actually a few days ago, a uh, friend was actually talking about me, uh, a few things in the book that I didn't know. And I swear I thought they were messing with me, but Good old Stephen King uh, likes to throw curveballs at you. Would, uh, would this movie inspire you to check the book out? or? Uh, it, actually, it out? actually, yeah, I would actually really be interested in reading it <laughs> just to see what other things were not in the movie or things that were not in the original that they included in this version. So it seems like you enjoyed it. Are you on board for Chapter 2, the next one? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait. All right. Well, Cody, how did you feel about the film? I very very much so enjoyed this movie. I went in there, I guess not with super high expectations, but I don't know, I, I didn't think it was going to be terrible. I was excited for the movie, of course, but I was going into it with the mindset, this is a remake, uh, but they're trying to stay a little bit more true to the book. Uh, so I was very interested on how their take would go. Something that's always tricky in movies like this that involve kids is how well did the child actors do I think these child actors did a really good job. How do you feel about the cast? I, I really enjoyed the cast. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everyone 
hit their spots perfectly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, something I noticed about it was that they didn't shy away from making it PG-13 or kid-friendly. They actually made it how kids would probably talk when their parents weren't around. So mm -hmm. if you don't like that kind of language, then you probably wouldn't like the movie, but I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, there's, was a funny touch. there's one kid uh, in particular who constantly is just cussing everyone Mr. out. Mr. Stranger Things himself. Yeah, uh, Finn Wolfhard, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he's great in Stranger Things, and I definitely recommend Stranger Things too, which also feels like a Stephen King sort of story mm -hmm. as well. So he was perfect for this, I feel. How uh, do you think the rest of the cast did? I think they did great. And then uh, Bill Skarsgård for Pennywise was amazing. Um, I know they had a bunch of recasting with it whenever they started working on the film, but I think in the end, they, they ended up with a great actor. Now, Bill Skarsgård is the son of Stellan Skarsgård, right? Who's also showed up in some movies like Thor and other stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I guess it's kind of in the family there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know anything else that Bill Skarsgård is in. I tried looking into some of his uh, other films and shows that he's been in and nothing I really recognized. So I know a lot of these kids, I feel like I've seen them before. Mm. Uh, like, of course, Finn, we, we know where he's from. But the other kids, you kind of recognize a few of them, I feel. I feel like Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise was scary. There is something to be said about the original Pennywise, though, and just that campiness and the creepiness mm -hmm. of it. So it's it's very different, <clears throat> but I feel, of course, the new It is better overall, of course, than the, yeah. than the old 90s one. It really worked well as a remake. I thought it was great as a film. It's not the most original thing, obviously, since it's based on a book that has already been adapted before. Mm -hmm. But for that kind of remake, for that sort of adaptation, I thought it was fantastic. Also, the effects were pretty good, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, effects were very much so on point. Uh, you can tell sometimes that it is very CGI, but that's mainly just because they couldn't do it practical because they were just getting ridiculous. And <laughs> uh, compared to like how the first movie is, where they use, it's only practical pretty much the entire movie, except for the second part where you get the giant spider... Uh, this movie, very much so, they, they, uh, you can tell they use a little bit of practical, but the CGI in this is on point. The scariest thing about Pennywise in this movie, I think, are his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. The, that was the best effect. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, I know. The jaws opening and just the giant teeth was yeah, horrific I mean, for me. With, with the CG, it's easy for them to transition. And then I really enjoyed what they did with his eyes throughout mm -hmm. the movie. Because uh, you slightly see the color change as from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie, to where at the beginning of the movie his eyes are blue. Mm -hmm. By the end of the movie, his eyes have this nasty green tint to them. And even when he's in the dark, his eyes are glowing, which mm -hmm. I thought was a nice effect too. And then his eyes roll into the back of his head. There's just all sorts of little touches. I like when CG isn't like in your face, mm -hmm. and they use it to make little touches like that. That's I think the best. Use. One of the little touches I really enjoy with the CGI and it is uh, the little marks you get from putting makeup on and stuff. They have those marks in like his forehead, even though uh, like his forehead may be warping and stuff like that. So it still feels like, even though he's all warped, it's still painted on there. Very interesting. So I know I definitely caught that, and I really enjoyed it. I <laughs> was expecting this movie to be slightly scarier than it was, but that may just be because I'm older now. Mm -hmm. So it probably it would be scarier to a lot younger audience, but it was pretty creepy. It was frightening. I would say like a haunted house level yeah. of, of frightening. So I wouldn't say it would give me nightmares or it was scary. There was a lot of hype behind it. So I was like, oh, well, I'm going to be terrified. But I wasn't as scared as I thought I was, but that does not detract from yeah. the greatness of this movie because I thought it was really good. Uh, I definitely felt like you, you knew every time there was going to be a jump scare. Mm. And so while you're watching... You're not worried about that. You're more worried about, like, what is the scare? Like, uh, it's a zombie-type people or... The, the uh, kids' different fears. Yeah, yeah which they, they definitely dig into a lot more in this where... Well, they have more time to do it because, spoilers, this first movie is just about them as kids, just about the Losers Club. And if you've seen the original 90s miniseries, it's both. That's why the miniseries is uh, over three hours long, because it's going back and forth in flashbacks from their childhood to when they're 40. This film stays pretty much completely only when they're children, and it ends with It Chapter 1, which suggests that they're going to do it like the book and make a second movie where 
uh, Pennywise returns after 27 years again and terrorizes them when they're adults. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally down to see that. And uh, I hope I do hope that it's the same director for both movies, uh, which was uh, Andy uh, Muschietti, I believe. I'm not sure who that is. What else has he done? Uh, another movie he's done, he hasn't done a whole lot, but he's done another horror movie that I actually really enjoyed, which was Mama. Mama, I haven't seen that. Uh, it's, it's just a very dark movie. Mm -hmm. And so you definitely see a lot of those elements in here. Because it's like the dirty, grimy, like, horror that you see in this. And it's not, it doesn't take the usual route that most movies take today, where it's just going for jump scares, uh, where it's just, like, it looks super fake. This movie, like, you feel like everything is real. I feel like any horror movie or story like this involving kids is usually a little bit better because the kids always know better than the adults. And I love that in Stephen King stories and Spielberg movies and like Stranger Things like we were mentioning. So I'm definitely more prone to see the horror type films that involve kids figuring out things that adults can't more so than just all the other stuff that's out there. And of course it's Stephen King. So, uh, I mean, how would you rate this film? Um, well, for a horror movie... Film. I'd have to say like close to 10, like maybe even nine or eight, nine, because it's actually like a well done horror film, I think. I'd give it at least a nine. Yeah. Um, I would put it at like a solid, maybe like 8.5 or nine, actually. It's pretty good. I'd definitely give it at least a nine or 10 for I'd sure. Give it for the, eight. Yeah. Eight for the, from you. Yeah. Nine for me. Yeah, nine for me for sure. I think I would end up rating this film. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think I'm going to have to give it uh, probably an 8. An 8? Yeah. I will say I'll agree with you. I'll also give it an 8. <laughs> well, also, there's a new Blu-ray out as well. And we got to see this movie in the theater, and I also wanted to pick it up because I liked it so much, and that is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I actually got to see this movie opening night when it came out in the theaters with Ryan here. What's up, Ryan? Hello, everyone. Yeah, so I picked up the Blu-ray this week because it's a necessary buy for my collection. I love this movie, but we have a little bit of a disagreement about it because I feel like it doesn't quite reach the greatness of the first one. Well, How do you feel about it? Well, I feel like everything that the first one had done... The second one took that mm. and made it like even more like they did more with it mm. i thought um the visual effects were really good like that's what i really enjoyed because when we saw it of course we saw it and what is it what do they call it xd or whatever it yeah yeah the xd yeah and that was just Giant screen. that was just like the one thing that blew my mind man was just like when they were doing the visual effects like when yondu passed away and they were doing the what do they call themselves the reaper funeral yeah, they, the were Ravager, doing, the Ravager, they were doing. They were doing the Ravager funeral, and Spoilers. when they when they were doing the fireworks show and everything, mm -hmm. I was just like, yeah. I almost brought a tear to my eye because it's just like I, I really in movies I really appreciate stuff like that and in the that movie. Impact. Yeah. And we cannot miss the point that the greatest part of that movie was Dave Bautista as <laughs> as Drax the Destroyer. Okay, he just sorry. No, go ahead, man. Dave Batista. Batista, I watched him in wrestling. He was a good guy. He was a cool guy then, but seeing him now, how he's evolved from going, you know, he did like, you know, how The Rock did. He mm -hmm. did small movies and then he moved on and did. You know, now he's doing these bigger roles, filling bigger shoes. And I feel like with Drax, he really did that. He really just in this movie, he just stood out because he was just such a smart ass. And it was just, he had me laughing the entire movie. Yeah, um, yeah Drax. I think he's a hilarious character, but actually, man, I think in the second one, they overused his humor a little bit. That's that's the one issue I found with the second one, is that the, the humor was a little bit revved up, and they might have thought they were a little bit funnier than they actually were. That's not to detract from this movie, because I do enjoy it a lot. It's just when I compare the first one with the second one, like you were saying, the emotional impact with Yondu, I felt that with Groot, with the We Are Groot, and when he sacrifices himself at the end of the first one. So it's very close for me, but I think as a film, the first one is still triumphant for me. Although, of course, I do love this movie. I bought it. I picked it up. I've watched it three times. And I will say this about Guardians Volume 2. It's one of those movies that grows on you. Each time I've watched it, 
I've liked it even more because it does enhance the first movie as well. You find out more things about the characters, so when you go back and watch the first Guardians, it means more to you. Right. And any movie that can do that, I think, is is a winner. Yeah, I mean, I just like how, <clears throat> like in the first one, they played it off to make it seem like Yondu was just this mean old dude mm. that was just treating him wrong and everything, but I just thought it was really awesome that you find out at the end that he was actually a good guy and he was just trying to train and help Star-Lord or Peter Quill, whoever you want to call him, help him, you know, be a better man than his father, as you see, we'll see in the second one, as acted. Right, I agree. I thought Yondu was the best part of the second one, for sure. Yeah, Yondu was really cool. I think, of course, as very many people, our favorite part, of, my favorite part of the movie was, I'm Mary Poppins, yeah. y'all! That was by far the best part of the movie. <laughs> Dude, I remember when that, when that part hit, everybody in the theater just started laughing. It was great, but overall, if I, I, I don't know if we're doing review, rate Yeah, let's not, rate it. But I would give Gardens of the Galaxy my solid 10 out of 10 because it was my favorite movie of the summer, beating Spider-Man Homecoming. Really? Yeah, I thought Spider... Well, we won't go into Spider-Man Homecoming. That We can leave that for another one. But Gardens of the Galaxy 2, please watch this movie if you've seen the first one. If you haven't seen the first one, please go see the first one and get out of the cave you live in. <laughs> All right, well, I personally give the first Guardians film a 9 for me. Uh, it is one of my favorite Marvel things going on, like you said as well, because I love the humor, I love the music. So I'm going to have to go with an 8 for Guardians Volume 2 and a 9 for Guardians 1. But well, it's a solid 8 for me. I would definitely recommend picking up, watching it if you haven't seen it already, and picking it up on Blu-ray. Yeah, definitely for sure. And uh, look for look for them to be in uh, Avengers Infinity War. And also Thor Ragnarok, I think, crosses over with this as well. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok. I see, because I noticed with Thor Ragnarok, they're going in the same direction. It looks like his Guardians are including more, like, poppy music and flashy colors and, like, making people laugh and change it up a little bit, which is cool. But it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here now that Infinity Wars is upon us. I also uh, want to mention during the credit scenes, because if you... If it's a Marvel movie, obviously you don't turn it off when the credits start. you got to watch it all the way through. You can see Jeff Goldblum's character from Thor Ragnarok dancing with the other Guardians characters. Right. So there's obviously going to be a tie-in there. I'm sure we'll know more about it when Ragnarok comes out. Well, if you, can, if you haven't gotten anything out of this video, just go watch the movie and find out yourself. That's all I can say. This has been Real Inspectors with Shreveport Talks. I'm Mitch. And I'm Ryan. We'll see you next time. Real inspectors, bullshit detectors, trapping the truth and let your film collectors. Cody and Mitch ain't even real directors, but they still gonna tell you which movie was better.